It's a recent thing with me, but I have a newfound interest in classical arcade games. Ever since I started to delve into this very essential part of gaming culture, I found myself being more aware of what the great scheme of things was with all the 80s games that I played on the C64 and the NES. Back in the day I was aware of the fact that some of my games have versions on other platforms and that some are originated from the arcades. I just did not know how connected these platforms actually are through the business of bringing the arcades into homes. I was legit surprised when I found out that Clowns, Moon Shuttle or Solar Fox were not C64 exclusives. But now that I know better, sometimes when I play with some C64 games they feel so much arcadey that it's kinda amazing to me that they didn't have actual arcade predecessors with their own dedicated cabinet. They would have deserved one, which is part of why I built a MAME arcade for myself. One of those games is Drelbs. It is by no way a C64 exclusive, I mean it was originally developed by Kelly Jones in 1983 for the Atari 8-bits, and even an Apple II version preceded the one I'm familiar with. There are no significant differences between the three versions other than the pacing and the colors used, but I still prefer the C64 version. I think its less vibrant palette of colors lends a bit of mystical darkness to the game. And this could be merely a matter of me being used to playing this version, but I like its relatively moderate speed compared to the original. Even so, oh god, what a fast game this is! It's not uncontrollable crazy fast, I would just call it deceptive fast, always convincing me to dare risky moves so I collide with something I shouldn't collide with. Okay, I'm jumping too forward, let's not do that. As you can see, this game is not something super rich in features, and its graphics could be written off as the style of a yet another quirky 80s game. But it is not uncommon that the oddities we see on the screen are being put into context by description either embedded in the game or in the manual. However, imagine that you don't know English and you're a child who is yet to have a proper education in this language. On top of that, you live in a post-communist country and the game was never properly marketed there, so the only copy you got is a pirated one, so not even the cover art can give you a better visual cue. Question: With zero available guidance, how would you read the near psychedelic visual and auditory experiences coming from a game like Drelbs? Like me, you'd probably just try to play the game, accepting its weirdness while relying on your own imagination to make sense of what's happening. After I became able to read the manual, it kinda invalidated the imaginary world I've built around this game. And I think it's sad in a way, because in my opinion, in some details, my ideas were simply better than what the description provides. But don't worry, I won't bother you too much with my headcanon. What I didn't care to build up in my mind is a story which is as follows. Once upon a magical time, there was a microscopic land inhabited by a race that looks like the genetically damaged clones of Mike Wazowski, with no arms or mouth and their skin is brown. They are the Drelbs. Now they were peaceful and happy folks, but the people of grumpy looking sentient bricks called the Trollobors decided they step on the path of conquest and annex the kingdom of the Drelbs. Most of the Drelbs, being weak and not really used to repelling invaders, were hunted down and captured already. The ones still free are now resorting to the tactic of retreating to the center of their city and making their stand there, in a maze-like complex they call the Atomic Flipgrid. It does sound like an impressive technological achievement for a race that lacks the manipulator limbs sufficient for building a civilization. In this maze we are either a lonely drelb with 5 lives or a small task force of 5 drelbs taking turns in fighting. Well, more like avoiding the trollobors hunting us. And the screw head tank that looks like a red and blue striped worm, who also shoots missiles that could enter the maze and zigzag around by bouncing off walls without end. They could be quite an annoyance, if you ask me. The objective is to save all the captured drelbs, although I don't see how that ultimately solves the problem of an enemy occupation. Perhaps this is just the first half of the full story and enough justification for a sequel. Drelbs, strike back!
To rescue our tiny comrades, all we have to do is flipping the walls in the maze so four of them combined form a square, which results in the creation of a portal that is closed by default. The manual calls it a gorgolite box, but for the sake of making explanation easy, I will stick with the word portal. Besides avoiding our brick face pursuers, we can deal with them by enclosing them in a portal, and to make this maneuver more risk free, we can freeze them in one place by consuming a randomly appearing heart. Once we successfully imprison the trollobor, it'll take some time until he comes back. Until something appears in a portal, it remains a solid obstacle, so logically the more we create, the less free our movements become, and we're more endangered by our enemies. But at the same time, the more portals we create, the more points we make, and there's a higher chance for a portal actually opening up when more of them are present. When a portal opens up, it could lead to three things. One is the face of the mystery lady, who, in the C64 version at least, doesn't look convincingly ladylike, and because of that I actually thought I'm seeing a dude. So I decided somewhere in my confused head that he resembles David Bowie, therefore I called him that for a long time. So there is David Bowie in the portal and he's apparently asking for help, and to do that I would have to hop on his head, which immediately results in a weird looking bonus sequence. When I finally figured out what the real identity of this face was, I also learned that what I'm doing is actually giving her a kiss. Even though I get rewarded, I'm not sure kissing her satisfies her need to get help. Furthermore, what is a human woman doing in this microscopic world? And how can an eyeball creature without a mouth kiss her? Well, these are just a few things to think about. Anyway, the other face we can see in a portal that is, as I mentioned, called the Gorgolite box is an actual Gorgolite. These creatures are the bodies of Trollobors who will appear in most of the open portals and they are here to act as guards of the imprisoned realms. Stepping on these faces results in the loss of a life, so essentially a mere obstacle that is a closed portal turns into a death trap that could be entered if one is overly hasty. To lure the player into this trap, the Gorgolite sometimes reveals a Drelbic window for a very short time, which is an opening to a different stage called the Dark Corridor. We can open up such a window ourselves and for a much safer length when we consume a diamond. The Dark Corridor is the place where we make our attempt at freeing our one-eyed brethren by picking them up so they can quickly run away, but we still have to face the Gorgolite guards who walk around and shoot in seemingly unpredictable directions. On closer observation, they have a pattern of switching between horizontal and vertical shooting so we can at least plan with that knowledge. Not only they can take a life away, but in the same time they also kick us back to the grid stage, completely invalidating our rescuing efforts, so be very careful with them. Freeing all the captives on the screen is what gets us to the next level, with more trollobors and gorgolites making our life more difficult. Once all the 8 levels are completed, the game rewards us with a happy ending and all the score we can take with us while we celebrate our victory. But it is vastly not as likely to achieve as the faces of bad guys covering up the entire screen while making blubbering sounds in approval of our ultimate demise. This is all I got about this very fun and unique little game. If you happen to be in possession of an arcade cabinet that is capable of emulating either the C64 or the Atari 800, I recommend you to try this game out because I think this game really fits that environment. If you liked this video, please click on the thumbs up or perhaps subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I always welcome feedback in either the comments section or on my social media accounts. Bye! Thank you.